Hey guys, this is Stark here for Film Ride Extras, and today I'm going over sky replacement. So we're going to dive right in. Now, here's our shot from uh, Foot Chase. Let me just press play. It's a really short clip because this is all we need. And this is a, actually, this is probably the worst condition you could actually have for sky replacement, so it's good that I'm using this. Now, the one thing that I want to stress is that Sky replacement is not a paint by numbers thing. Each time you do it, it's sort of like keying, uh, like green screen keying or something or blue screen where that it might be the same. It might be easy. It might be difficult. This is one of those shots where it's actually not that easy to do it the way that you would think, but how we end up there is super simple because it's what worked for the shot. And that's what you need to keep in mind. Now, first thing I like to do with any sky replacement, even if it's standing still, because you don't know if you have wind or anything, is that we need to track. And it, you would probably first look at this thing and it doesn't look like camera's moving that much. But you can see that when it pops back to the front, it is, there's a little bit of drift. So the first thing I like to do is just make a new null object, and then we're just gonna call this uh, camera track. Okay, and this is setting it up for the, the actual uh, track here. Now, if you're new to Adobe, you might be used to the uh, the new like VFX tracker thing that tracks your scene, but we don't even need that at all. We just need the old point tracker. So let me try to find that. So actually let's just double click. If you double click usually, and then we go to window tracker. So here it is down here. You're going to see all this. Now we want to track the motion. And luckily, the way that uh, the point tracker works is that it actually tracks points. It's not like Mocha where it'll uh, track planes and textures. It's more just that. It'll see a um, point, so some place of high contrast, even one of these guys. But we're just going to stick with this because it is subtle and we have some wiggle room. Now this is the area that it's gonna sort of search. So if it's moving fast, it's gonna kinda search in that area. And then this is the inner box that it looks for the main thing to key. Now we wanna do not scale or position or rotation, or sorry, not scale because it's so far in the background and there's it's not like a close up shot where there's crazy parallax or anything. So let's just do this. Let's make this bigger, make this guy bigger. And then you're going to go down here and see this edit target. And you can see how it already filled in the, the null. And this is so that we're not actually tracking our footage and then applying it to our own footage. So let's just track it. It should be really, really quick, actually. Okay, and then we'll just do... Scroll down and we're just going to hit apply and this is saying X and Y. So it's uh, X, Y. So up and down position and then press OK. And then it brings us back to our main comp. And then you could test this out by like, let's just do a new text layer. Of course, let's type in, not rack, sorry, track. Move it down to an area where we could actually see. And I had caps lock on, so there. And then we're just going to pick whip it to here. And you can see that it's almost so subtle that it's kind of annoying that you have to do it in the first place, but you do. So there is that. So now this is sort of the basic building blocks of what you're going to want. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go through and I'm just telling you now that none of these things I'm about to show you until we get to the end is actually gonna be the one that works. 
but I'm going to show you the common problems and sort of the common approaches that uh, most people, not most people, but that uh, you'll probably go through. And it's sort of a good idea and it's sort of, um, let me close this and try to make some space. It's not working here. Um, and just, yeah, some of the things that we're going to go through. So now I have this sky image here and it is massive as you can see. Okay. So this is going to be our, our background. For now, we're going to do this and then we're actually just going to attach it here. Now, what's cool about doing it this way is that we could always move it left, right, scale. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's tracked to this and it won't screw anything up. Now, one of the first things, because this is a blown out sky, okay, it's a basically a huge, uh, I'm assuming there are clouds, obviously, because it's not blue. And if it actually was blue, you could actually use a standard key. But what's funny about this situation is how um, you kind of go back to these old school tricks. I'm actually doing this on the wrong layer. And then what we're going to do is just, we're going to key out brighter and then, oops, sorry, not our tolerance, our threshold. Now, as you can see, here's one of the biggest problems, which is that you could go ahead and you could say edge feather, and you're starting to see the haloing from the original one. Now, this is actually because it's not getting those um, like in between pixels. You could do edge thin, which you could clearly see is not going to work. But however, if this was in the background and it was uh, something blurry or whatever, you probably could get away with it. Now, I'm just going to keep this here because I'm also going to show you this guy over here, which is refine soft matte. And it's actually going to, it's kind of slow, but it's going to go through and kind of, or it should. And then let's chatter reduction. So now this is basically going to be pretty much how it, the 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 things that you're sort of going to look for is um it's mostly masking and then sort of repairing edges that's that is i would say pretty much what a sky replacement is is in a nutshell it's that now one thing that i think might get sort of lost and sometimes you'll just see sky replacements that don't quite pull it off is that you have to also look at your source material like if like, do you see how dark the sky is right here? Like, yeah, it's cool looking. It's dramatic. However, it, like, come on, like, it's not going to look this way. It doesn't, it looks so out of place. So let me scale it up and this might illustrate it better, but you could see as I scale it up and then I kind of just bring it more into like the light part close to how the original one is B besides these little holes here, it's looking pretty good. Okay, now this is pretty much it. We're almost done actually, because again, there's other things you could do. So if I was to say in a, like an order, it would be that first you wanna track your moving thing so you get that out of the way. Because once you get that out of the way, you don't have to think about it. And then you could attach it and see if it's working. So you want to track first, and then you want to see if you could actually get a meaningful key. Now, if you're curious uh, what Luma is, it's just the brightness of that. So there's different types, and you could go through all of these. And uh, if you're wondering what will happen, I'm just going to type key light and put it on here. Because I'm sure when I say keying, that's what happened. Um, you can't really screen or key out white because it's not it's not so much a color as anything so 
I would stay away from the Kier unless the sky is like blue or some other color and not like pure white here. So now let's actually make this look realistic. Okay, so now one of the things I'm gonna do to get this thing to work is uh, something called a linear burn, okay? And you could actually look up the definition of how all of these blending modes work because it's it's mathematics, so it's I'm not gonna go through it here because it'll just be jargon. And I did linear dodge, so let me let's go to linear burn. And what's actually nice is I'm not sure if a lot of people know this, but these are sort of in categories here where like dark and add like these are uh, similar but different blending modes. Now immediately you're gonna notice a problem, which is that cool the sky looks cool, right? However. It is uh, dark, like all of this is dark. So what we could do, and again, the other thing to keep in mind, like I said before, is to use things as a, a mask. So we're gonna actually do a luma mat. Now, you might think like, oh, this is perfect. And the, the problem is that it's not, obviously, because if you look at the color, like look like in this area, it's coloring over that. However, what we could do, and it actually ends up making it look more realistic, is we're just gonna go ahead and make a very, very simple, um, just like mask around our talent. Let's, let's see how far we can go with it. Let me just go to the very last frame. Okay, so I'm gonna move it up to where she's not. And then turn this off. And again, it looks fake right now, so we're gonna hit M, double hit. If you hit M, MF, MP, sorry, MP, MP, sorry. Oh, mask pass, sorry. <laughs> mask, it'll just bring this up. Now, if we start to go in, let me feather it fit it and then what we'll do is we will just feather and it's funny how if you just do it like that it's going to start to look pretty realistic because there's this fall off and the cool thing is they're clouds right so that clouds are typically white or at least in some part of it you're going to have it so it kind of lends itself to blending automatically. And you won't notice, because look at the trees here and notice how the dark parts, and it'll kinda, like, technically it might change the color. It, I mean, it is changing the color because it's a blending mode, but I mean, those parts don't really matter, you know? So, maybe let's bring, bring this down here. And again, it's connected to our track. So let's just. No one will ever be the wiser. And then I'm just gonna try to do a quick playback. And honestly, that's our uh, sky replacement. It's not as it's not really difficult at all. Now, another thing that you could do is, and this is just a stylized thing obviously, is that we'll go in here and what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually just gonna keyframe the position. I'm gonna kinda overdo this. Cause you could, so it lends itself to that sort of look of like a windy day and you could actually add deformations or displacement or something into here if you want. But that's basically a sky replacement. So I'm just gonna go over the, the basic things to keep in mind first, which is uh, one, you wanna track something so that we have something to attach to. You actually wanna choose something that matches your footage uh, or matches your scene, because you don't want to be too polarizing. And I know you've seen, like, movies where 
it's it's so different like even just this little bit just turning up its brightness on this curve here it even makes it look better so it's little things and this is for a realistic sky replacement so it's not stylized if it's stylized go nuts do whatever you want but let me just turn it off so here's before a pure white and then after again so track key or matte fix the edges and then add the sky and then color correct. It's very simple. You don't need to make it more complex than it is, especially with a nightmare of edges like that. So that's pretty much it. So uh, give it a try and see how it works. Thanks guys. 